This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. It's the last chapter of the um, lecture notes. Uh, it's headed the Treasury function, uh, which uh, I don't know is a bit misleading because only a little bit of this is purely the Treasury function. But I've used the same chapter uh, to give you some notes about what we call money market instruments. Uh, but the main thing is the treasury function itself. And what it is, certainly large companies are likely to have a department, the treasury, whose job is really to do two things. Um, it's to manage short-term cash. and to manage risk, especially foreign exchange risk. Uh, and the sort of way they'll operate, I mean, we talked about managing, managing um, working capital and managing cash in a much earlier chapter, but it's particularly applicable, very common, when, when it's a big group of companies. You know, we may have lots of offices all around the country all of which have short-term cash balances. And, you know, we want to make best use of that cash. We put it on, you know, look back at the earlier chapter, we put it on short-term deposit and things. But rather than let each of our companies around the country put their own cash on deposit, we can effectively, potentially, get a much better return on it if somebody sat at head office who's, if you like, putting all the cash together and as a result putting a much bigger amount on deposit and potentially they can earn a bigger return. You know, I remember a long time ago the company I worked for, one of the big teaching companies in the UK with offices all around the country. Well, although I ended up in London for a time, I was in Manchester and every night we'd get a phone call from the treasury person in the head office wanting to know what our cash balance was. Because every night they would move cash balances into one account and put it on overnight deposit because they could get high interest because all the offices together, although each office had relatively small cash balances, put them all together and it was a large amount. So that's one function of the Treasury. Uh, the other function, I said, is measure, managing risk, particularly foreign exchange risk. And again, it's particularly applicable if it's um, a large group of companies, uh, all of whom trade overseas, trade abroad. You see, you might have one office in one city who does a lot of selling to America, so they're receiving dollars. Maybe with another office uh, in a different city, and they do a lot of buying for America, and they're having to pay dollars. So individually, both offices have exchange rate risk. And if they were just to operate separately, uh, the office receiving dollars then has the risk because they're converting it, if we're in the UK, into pounds. Whereas completely separately, the other office that's buying for America, they're buying dollars and they're at risk. Well, of course, much more sensible have somebody in head office who's, if you like, matching them all together and looking at it from the group's point of view and saying, ah, uh, this office is receiving dollars, this office is paying dollars. Let's use the dollars from one office to pay the dollars that the other office owes, and we're on, the group is only at risk on the difference. So that's a sort of role of the Treasury, and I say it's particularly applicable when it is a large company with separate divisions, separate offices. So that's really all that this chapter is about. It's not, again, a numbers thing. It's just being aware of what the function is of the Treasury. The rest of the chapter mentions the money market and money market instruments. Um, it's just 
really terminology. When I said about the put money on short term money, they want to invest it, but it's just simply on a deposit account or um, investing in financial instruments. To be tested on detail of the rest of it just won't happen in F9. And I'm not going to read it to you, but do have a, a look down. A lot of it we've mentioned before, particularly the role of the banks, financial intermediaries, that was mentioned in the first of the second chapter. But the principal money market instruments, don't spend ages learning them, but just have a, an awareness just in case any of them are mentioned in, not as numbers in the exam, but effectively as written questions. So have a read down. Uh, but uh, as I said, that I'm not, it's not so important that I'm going to read it to you.